Thanks to Bai for sponsoring this video. Hi guys, Haley here, and today I am sharing the spotlight with this gigantic box. Oh, yep, there we go. I just shipped this from Bai. Um, this is the anime figures that I have bought in the last two to three months, and I finally opted to ship this big boy over. And today, we're gonna get into it. Bongo Cat. So now that I'm in the middle of the frame, uh, let me quickly tell you how much it costs to ship all of my figures over. So that big box, I might put another photo up just so you have the context, uh, cost me 12,000 yen to ship from Japan to Australia with FedEx. Um, it also cost me 1,000 yen to consolidate all the packages together. And on top of that, I had to pay Australian GST, which cost me about 8,000 yen. And I think that's a really good price because sometimes on Ami Ami, uh, for a big figure, it would cost me that alone to ship a single figure via DHL, if DHL is the only option. So I love that I've been able to use FedEx, which I found is much cheaper than DHL to like bulk ship all of these figures to me. All right, with that done, let's actually jump into this big box and see what's in it. It's a little ridiculous to keep the box in frame, so I'm just gonna go figure by figure. And first up, we have this one. Let me de-bubble wrap it. This one was from Book Off. So the figure is the Racing Miku 2018 Challenging to the Top 1 7th scale figure by Aquamarine. May they rest in peace. Uh, they don't exist anymore, unfortunately. So this figure is a bit of a dumb purchase because I already have the Racing Miku 2018 Good Smile Company figure. And I, it's dumb to buy two of the same racing design, but I really couldn't stop thinking about this figure. I think she's adorable and I really liked the pose and I just couldn't get this thought that I think I like this one more than the one I have out of my head. So when I saw that her aftermarket price is actually less than retail and pretty affordable, I thought even though it's stupid, I'd pick her up. Um, so I have this one and then maybe I can think about selling my other one if I run out of space or something. I'll probably end up keeping both, but that's just what I'm telling myself. So her original retail price is 13,700 yen, uh, but this one only cost me 9,500 yen, so she's like a good 3,000 yen cheaper. Let's cr crack her open. It looks like she actually is brand new and sealed. I didn't even pick that up on the listing. All right, I have unboxed her, and let me tell you, this figure is just plain good. Like, it's quite a simple figure, it's just the Racing Miku standing on a base, but it's just done so well. Racing Miku 2018 is by far my favorite Racing Miku design, and I love everything about this outfit, and I think this figure really nails all of the details of the outfit. I also really love her adorable pose, I think she looks so cute. The other stunning thing about this figure is her hair. They absolutely nailed the hair gradient from that blue down to that green. And I love her adorable smiling expression as well. The only downsides for me for this figure is that the base is a little boring, but apart from that, I think this is a great pickup. It's also crazy to note that this is a 1 7th and the Good Smile Company one is also a 1 7th. The size difference is insane. I do think the Good Smile Company one has better details, but I think I like the pose of the Aquamarine one more. And I think she takes up less space, so she's a lot easier to display in a collection. I find the Good Smile Company one very tricky to work with. So I know buying this was a bit of a silly decision because I already have a Racing Miku, but now that I've seen her and have her, I don't think it was that silly of a decision. I'm actually very happy I made that uh, silly decision. <laughs> All right, this here is the next figure. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what this is, but let me get it out of this cardboard. So if you hadn't already guessed, this big box here is a Freeing Beast style quarter scale bunny. It is the DF quarter scale Kelly in English, but probably Kerry in Japanese, a bunny version figure from Freeing. 
and this is based off an illustration by Saitom. So I'm a very big fan of Saitom's illustrations and actually he's got an illustration book called DF. I've got it. So, so Saitom actually illustrated this art book DF, which I think stands for Devil Girls and Fashion. And all through this book is different kinds of uh, demon girls or cat girls in amazing streetwear fashion. And I love all the illustrations in here. And apparently so do a bunch of figure manufacturers because there has been a bunch of Dia figures that have been made. And I kind of want all of them, not gonna lie. And so this is the DF bunny, where it's a bunny girl, but in kind of a street wear jacket. And my God, I love everything about this bunny, except one thing. You probably guess what it is. It's that damn finger. <laughs> like, I don't know what she's doing with the figure. It's freeing, so it's supposed to be safe for work. So I guess I have to assume she's just untucking a wedgie. So because of this finger, I was pretty 50-50 on this figure, and in the end I did decide to pre-order it, um, so now I'm gonna see what I think in the flesh. <laughs> There's actually a little bit more to getting this bunny. So I originally had her pre-ordered on Army Army, but they would only ship her DHL, and I did not want to pay that price, so I was a bit of a carrot and I said, oh, can you please ship it Surface, because that would be way cheaper. Long story short, um, Army Army wouldn't ship the Surface because they do have restrictions on Surface shipping sizes. So I actually opted to cancel them through Army Army and buy her instead on Yahoo Japan Auctions. That way I could ship it cheaper. And it turns out her price has come down a few thousand yen. So overall, I think that was a good outcome for me. <laughs> but enough chit chat, I'm gonna get her open. Okay, here is Kelly. Um, and actually, I'm kind of torn on what I think about this figure. So there is a lot about this figure that I love. I'm really impressed with her face and her hair. I love this more experimental hair coloring they've done to make it look glossy. I also really dig her boots and her jacket. I think it's so cool to see fashionable clothes on figures. It's always such a nice bonus. I also think that the body sculpt of this figure is really impressive, especially in the shoulders. It just looks really realistic. And so now the downsides, obviously the finger. So it's not going up anywhere. It's just untucking a wedgie, I suppose. I do wish instead it came with an optional handpiece. So one that was doing this and maybe another one that was just resting there. And my other gripe about this figure is that she's kind of hard to display because she's got her big jacket sprawled out behind her and so she just takes up a lot of space. I think the disappointing thing is I love so much about this bunny. I love her shoes, her face, her hair, like everything except the pose. If they made her a kneeling bunny or a standing bunny or just something I could work with a bit easier, I think I'd be so obsessed with her. And so at the moment, I feel like I like her about 75% of the way. So I think whether or not I'll keep this figure long term comes down to whether I can find somewhere to display her where she fits and she looks good from. I guess the things that I don't like about this figure, I knew, I think at the time of me pre-ordering her, I wasn't quite into other quarter scale, maybe binding figures. So I didn't really know that there was more variety for big pretty lady figures, if that's what I'm looking for. But yeah, I don't know, still torn on this one. I do really love her, but then again, I'm only 75% of the way there. Okay, let's, let's move on before I just keep rambling. <laughs> I think one of the most enjoyable things to happen as a figure collector is when you go back to watch a bit of an older anime uh, after you figure collect and then you think oh let me go see what figures are available for this anime or these characters and then you find that they exist and they're very affordable and this is exactly what happened to me <laughs> so i picked up these two nendoroids from yuri on ice because i recently re-watched yuri on ice and i realized i don't own yuri on ice nendoroids and I was super pleasantly surprised to find that they are very affordable now and so I definitely picked up a couple of them. <laughs> 
So of course I picked up Yuri. I did opt for the uh, like ice skating costume versions and Yuri here cost me 4,200 yen. And of course I had to get Victor to go with him and Victor here was 3,950 yen. Both of these are pre-owned. I debated a lot as to whether to get these costume versions or the casual versions but I just like Victor so much in his like ice skating costume that I knew I wanted this Victor. I do like the other Yuri more but I kind of wanted them to match so. So let's take a look at Victor first. I think this Victor Nendoroid is perfect. He comes with three all amazing faceplates, a standard one, a cute winking one, and my absolute favorite, his like smiling one with his heart-shaped mouth. Accessory-wise, Victor comes with a medal, a bouquet, as well as his super cute pet poodle. Also, I think the Nendoroids look super cute on ice skates. Now taking a look at Yuri. Yuri also comes with three faceplates. He's got his normal smiling one, his like sexy Eros faceplate, and my favorite, his embarrassed face. I'm so glad that they threw in a different hairpiece and his glasses so you can recreate his off the ice look as well. And accessories wise, he comes with a smartphone and katsudon, which is perfect. I'm super happy to have these Nendoroids um, and I was so pleasantly surprised to see how cheap they were. As a whole, I was surprised with how cheap a lot of the Yuri on Ice merch and other figures were. I guess it's just a bit of an older anime and maybe the hype has died down for people and they're just selling off their collections. It is a little sad to see at the same time, like I'm able to benefit from it. So it's interesting to then think about the figures we have today and what's going to happen to them in five years. All right, this is the next figure. I think this is going to be probably the cutest figure in my collection um, after I open it. <laughs> and it is this one, the Rem Nekomimi version 1 8 painted figure by Alpha Omega. This figure was released in 2021 and retailed for 13,800 yen. And I literally only just learned that Alpha Omega is a collaboration brand between Ulta and Mega House, hence the name. That actually makes a lot of sense because this looks like an altar box. <laughs> so I think this is a very popular figure on anime figure Instagram, TikTok, in general kind of kawaii anime rooms because she is a hella cute figure. And I originally didn't really think about getting it because I think the figure market is so saturated with Rem that I was just like, no, I don't need to look at any Rem figures, there's so many but I did find myself slowly falling in love with this one. And the final straw was I actually watched DTTC's review of this figure and I was like, oh, I'm sold. I'm gonna <laughs> try and buy it. All right, let's open her up. I'm excited to open my first Alpha Omega figure too. All right, I have finished unboxing her and putting her together and I can confirm, uh, I think this is one of the, if not the cutest figure in my anime collection now. She is very adorable. Of course, I think this figure is adorable and I'm pretty happy with the quality. I don't think it's as good as Solo Ulta, but I think it's pretty good. I'm super in love with Rem's adorable expression and pose. Like this figure just oozes cuteness, like it literally weaponizes it. The other bonus is that Rem's ears and her tail are actually magnets, so you can easily attach and detach them for like two different looks. She can be Neko Mimi or just normal Rem. I also think the heart on the base is a super cute way to make her look like she's jumping without using support poles, so I thought that was a really good decision. A couple of downsides with the figure is that she is a 1 8 scale, so I did expect this, but I do think she's a little on the small side. And the other thing is that the clear plastic base is a little boring. Maybe a slight pink gradient through it or another pattern on it might spruce it up a little more. I am very obsessed with this figure, actually. I'm so glad I took the plunge and picked her up. I do wish they had a ram to go with her. I don't think they do, but I think that that would look just adorable to have the two of them with little cat ears. 
All right, and now we're down to the lucky last figure and it is the biggest of the haul. It's in this box here. So this was the majority of the shipping cost. Let's get into it. I wonder if some of you can guess what it is. This is a little bit like what Christmas morning feels like, tearing all this paper off. And it is this. It is the Jean d'Arc 3rd Ascension scale figure by Flair. This is my very first Flair figure. And I can tell you they take their box sizes pretty seriously. So I didn't plan on getting this figure and I saw her come up for pre-order and I didn't pre-order her because at that time I was still on the hunt for my Jean d'Arc Alter Alter figure which was kind of my holy grail so it's like why would I buy a bunch of other Jean figures? But then we get closer to her release date and I have my Jean figure and I keep thinking god it would be nice to have you know the yin to the yang, the, the light to the darkness the Jean d'Arc to the Jean d'Arc altar. <laughs> and so I just thought, wow, you know, third ascension Jean would just look so good next to Jean Alta. Um, and especially this, you know, behemoth from Flair. So after she released, I uh, started looking for her and looking for good prices to pick her up. Let's get this majestic lady out of here. This figure was 27,000 yen. Um, it's probably expensive because of the flag tax, because it's got a massive flag in it. <laughs> so it's been like three to four minutes of me trying to open her, and I finally got to the base, which gives me plate energy, because it's very big, and I could eat my dinner off it. Okay, she is assembled. That took like ten minutes. Uh, like, assembly was a pain. This flag, while it looks spectacular now, was a pain to put together. You have to put this joint in her hair first, in the hair, and then put this up and then this in. And it just wasn't aligning, but um, we got there in the end. For a while there, I thought I had broken her for a good 10 seconds, and but I don't think I have, I just, it's fine. And here she is, look at how massive and majestic this Jean looks. She does definitely remind me of Jolta Alta, but also the complete opposite energy. Obviously, the big standout with this figure has got to be the size and scale of this flag. Even though it was super difficult to put together, I really, really love the end result. I love how she's holding the flag and how it wraps around behind her. It frames the figure really beautifully. I also love how Flair have sculpted out all of the armor pieces. I think they look and are painted beautifully. I love all of the details and the etchings in them. I think her hair looks really nice as well, although I guess the strands could have a little bit more detail. And I think her face could have a little bit more detail. She could probably look a little prettier. Another slight downside for me with this figure is the base. I just think this pattern is a little bit tacky, um, but I guess it's good that they didn't just leave it to be plain white. I love how obnoxiously tall this figure is. Her flag goes all the way up to here, so I don't think she's going to be content in any normal size detail shelf or even on my bookcase shelves. So I'm going to have to be creative. Uh, with where I put her. She'll probably end up on top of my details here. I can't wait to put her next to my Jolta figure and see the two of them next to each other. I think it's gonna look so good. All right, those are all the figures I had in my box. I was so excited to be able to unbox them now. I have been waiting for like two months for some of them um, and I'm glad I was able to show you guys. I did want to give a quick shout out to Bai for sponsoring this video. So all of these figures I picked up today, I obtained through Bai. Specifically, I used the Yahoo Japan's auction integration with Bai to bid and win those bids for all of these figures. It's a normal routine for me now to use Bai to buy pre-owned figures from Yahoo Japan auctions or Amazon Japan, Rakuten, Makari, and the list goes on. And then every one or two months, I consolidate what I've bought 
and send them to me. Baie offers a lot of other additional helpful services, such as inspected photos, protective packaging, of course, package consolidation, sniper bidding, which can be helpful if you're trying to be sneaky. The other big benefit with Baie is that they support many, many shipping options. And this can be so helpful during these times when I don't want to shop with a DHL exclusive website. I want more options because I want to save my money. The other super helpful feature I use with Baie is the ability to save my searches and I also get email digests with all of my new search updates. Here is a list for the searches I'm looking for, but don't come after my bids, I want to win them. Baie has provided me with a 2000 yen first time purchase coupon below, so if you see a figure you like and you want to bid on it, make sure you use my code to save yourself 2000 yen. Thanks again to Baie for sponsoring today's video. Okay, and that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me in unboxing these figures. I had such a good time and I'm so happy with all of my new figures. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a good week. See ya! Bye-bye!